How do you plead, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, Your Honor. Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the evidence is undeniable, incontestable. This hypodermic syringe found next to the body of Denise Cavanaugh and the coroner's verdict, death by overdose. Oh, I'm a doctor. I wouldn't do such a thing. Do you deny that the amount of medication found in Denise Cavanaugh's body was sufficient to have caused her death within minutes? Do you deny that you threatened her life unless she gave you a divorce? Do you deny that you, and you alone, had the motive, the means, and the opportunity to murder your wife? Yes, I deny it! I didn't do it! I didn't do it! Miles Cavanaugh, the jury having found you guilty of murder in the first degree, I now pronounce sentence upon you. No, no you mustn't, please. Miles? No, you don't. You have the reverse. That's just as bad, in my opinion. I feel fine. I feel perfectly fine. You look as if you could hardly move. But if you tried to stand up, you'd fall down. It's just because I'm, I'm exhausted. I, I didn't sleep very well. I have a lot on my mind. I'm worried about Daddy. Have you, have you been in to see him yet today? Yes. He's all right. No change of any kind. Except... Well... This is hard to explain. What? Well, he seems more agitated than usual. I know, I know, that's, that's hard to determine since his paralysis is so complete, but there is a look in his eyes when he stares at me. Tell me something. Uh, Dr. Spangler, when he was here, said something about Daddy trying to communicate with him. How could he do that? I mean, he can't communicate any real message of any kind, can he? No, Denise. What Dr. Spangler meant was that your father can answer questions, yes or no. So when he was asked whether he wanted to be treated at the hospital, he indicated that he did not, so that meant he wanted to come home. But he can't say anything to anyone, can he? No. I'm afraid that's not possible. I don't think it would be any more than it's possible for him to make a recovery. Now, we are not giving up hope. Tina, I've been a nurse as long as you have. I've seen hundreds of people in my father's condition. I know he hasn't got long to live. I just want to be sure that he's made as comfortable as he can be for whatever time he has left. Denise, I really think that you should start thinking about your own health. You look worse today than you did yesterday. Well, I feel better. I, I think I'll probably get up, get out of bed today. That's out of the question. Listen, Tina, don't tell me what I can or can't do. I don't like being treated like a child. But I do want you to help me with something today. With what? Well, there's some errands I want you to run. <clears throat> Quite a lot. It'll mean you'll have to drive to Monticello. Monticello? Are you kidding, Denise? That would mean that I'd be gone for hours. Tina, I am a nurse. If my father needs anything, I can take care of it while you're gone. But, Denise, I don't want to leave both of you here without somebody to take care of you. Uh, we're not going to be alone. I, I forgot to tell you, Miles will be coming over. He will, but I, I thought... Yes, I know, I know. I told him there was no point in arguing. I wasn't going to change my position about the divorce, no matter what the circumstances were. But if he wants to come and argue until he's blue in the face, then I'm not going to stop it. I see. So, Miles is a doctor. I need anything. If Daddy needs anything, he'll be able to handle it quite competently, believe me. Of course. Anyway, so, um, these are the things I want you to get. It's quite a lot of clothing at Bennett's. Uh... They've told me they can't possibly promise a delivery for two weeks, and I certainly want to see that stuff and decide what of the fall styles I like before that. <laughs> You've ordered all these things? Well, I, I probably won't keep it all. I'll send a lot of it back. 
They're looking at the stuff in the magazines. It's awfully loose and baggy. Not exactly my style. Well, I wouldn't know about that. Denise, I, I wish you'd let me stay here just until your husband arrives at least. I don't know when he's coming, Tina. Uh, look, I, why don't you wait in, until I call him and then I know he's on his way and then you can leave, all right? That'd be better. All right. That would make me feel better. Well, I better get you some breakfast. Um, don't you think I ought to have some medication first? Well, you know that you'll tolerate the medication better if you have something to eat first. Oh, yes, that's true. All right. Oh, God, hurry. Oh. I haven't got much time left. Oh. I know, it's Miss Marvels. I can't believe it's happened. We're all here together again. At 60 miles from the Claremont. Fortunately. Mm -hmm. Come on in. You want some coffee? Oh, sure. Thank you. You know, I was so pleased when April told me that Miles was going into practice here, but uh, I was thrilled when I heard he was looking for a nurse. He wouldn't mind my taking the job. <laughs> Why would he mind? I'm sure he considers himself lucky to have you. He's always spoken very highly of you, you know. Well, I think he is the most... Incredible, Doctor. Thank you. Anyway, here I am, and I, I couldn't be happier about it. I'm very happy, too. I hope he does as well with patients as he has with personnel. Thanks. Listen, um... I know it's none of my business, but... Could I ask you a personal question? I'll wait till I hear it. It's just that I've known you two for so long, and... Of course, Denise. And I was just wondering where things stood. Well... Miles and Denise are separated. I'm sure you've gathered that. Miles intends to file for a divorce. Oh. Yes, it seems that his visit back to Mayfield was under false pretenses. I'll let him tell you about that if he wants to. I'm sure it's a horror story. Everything concerning Denise is. Anyway, I just want you to know, I hope things work out for you both. Miles is a wonderful man, and he deserves much better than he's gotten. Yeah. But, Nicole, I, I have to tell you one more thing. Don't underestimate Denise. Never. Dear, but your father's getting a little worried about you. A little worried about myself, too, sleeping this late. I was having such a nice dream, I just didn't want to wake up. <laughs> no, I think it's more than that. Mm. You've been working some late hours lately. I think you're just finding it difficult to adjust to this new work schedule of yours. Well, I have to be on the same schedule as my field training officer. Wherever he goes, I have to go. Ah, yes. Well, that means you're seeing a... Quite a bit of Steve Guthrie these days, doesn't it? Mm, yeah, quite a bit. <laughs> and would it be safe to say, not only in the line of duty? It would be safe to say. <laughs> but then, Steve and I saw a lot of each other before... Well, before some things happened. One of the things being your acquaintance mm. with Rainy Cooper? Well, no, I didn't mean that in particular. It's just that Steve and I have had a lot of difficulties, but Things are a lot better between us now. I'm going to make a confession. I like that young man. I like him very much. Don't tell my father that. <laughs> Please, Deborah. You know your father as well as I do, perhaps better. He adores you. It's just that he finds it difficult adjusting to the idea that 
that you're involved with someone in that profession. Of course, he can't object to Steve being a police officer, too, because that's, that's also your job. That's right. I've taken that advantage away from him, haven't I? I'm sure he'd like Steve very much once he got to know him. The problem is, is that every time Daddy and Steve get to know each other, it's always concerning some police investigation or other. Deborah, I'm going to say something else. Something about your other friend, Rainy Cooper. What about him? Oh, I'm sure he does a very good job for your father. I know that Anthony seems to rely on him a great deal of late, but I must confess I didn't get a very good impression when I met him. Do you mind my telling you that? No, of course not. I don't mean to interfere in any way, but it's just that well, I do feel like a mother to you, Deborah, and so I... Geraldine, you don't have to worry about it. Rainey has made it perfectly clear that he's not interested in seeing me anymore, and frankly, I really don't care. In fact, I've been thinking of returning a gift of his. For myself, I'm glad to hear it. And I'm glad that you and Steve are friends again. Oh, yes. We're very good friends. There's something I want to tell you. What is it, dear? What? Well, it's just something that I guess I've always known, but I just didn't want to admit it. It's, uh, it's just a, a feeling that I have. I'm in love with Steve. in here. These are the complete records of the Monticello Cleaning Company, the uniform company here. All right, so there's a connection to Tony Sachs. A connection, all right, a connection he's not going to be able to deny. Not that he's going to bother to try. He'll just claim it's a business investment. And a very suspicious investment, is that what you're telling me? Mm -hmm. That the company's number one customer was the city of Monticello. Right, so he says he has no influence over the contracts, that he doesn't profit from it directly, and even if nobody believes him, all he gets is a slap on the wrist. He could lose his job come that next election. That is not good enough. Not if what we believe about him is true. Not if the president of this company was murdered because of his connection with Tony Saxon. Shoved. Shoved out of a six-story window by Jim Beamer. Proof. We need proof. We've got to be able to prove that he's not just capable of dipping his hand in the till, but he's willing to use that hand to commit murder. Or have somebody committed for him. I know, Logan. That I know. That is why you have to be in on this. I can't have you pouting around worrying about whether or not it's going to foul up your love life. It will. I know it will. Oh. Deborah's not going to be real happy when all this comes down. Look, how could you blame you? It's not your play. It's Bill Marceau's and mine. You think I'll really be able to stay out of it? If you want to, if that's what you want, yeah. Yes, that's what I want. I really would like to. Deborah and I have argued enough about her father. One more time is going to bust us up, Logan. I've got to stay out of it. Oh, you know what I think? Hmm. I think the love bug has taken a really big bite this time. <laughs> and what would you know about it? You of all people. You're strictly the love them and leave them type. I would like to stay with Deborah, a little togetherness. And I don't mean in a squad car. Give me that. Now, wait, give me that back. Hey, what is it? No, no, wait, wait, wait. wait. Look, what that's personal it? property, Carl. Uh, well, like... Isn't that cute? Look at that. And where's the rest of them? There isn't any rest of them. That's it. Well, who took this one? I did. There's a cable release on the camera. It's in my right hand. You can't see it's around behind. Well, uh, what's the occasion? It's my uh, engagement. <clears throat> you, 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 wait a minute. You what? My engagement. Your, your, your engagement? Yeah. Wait a minute, your engagement? No, Would I don't I believe you. I'm coming up through the court. We're getting married, we're getting hitched, we're <laughs> getting spliced. Congratulations, all right? I think. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony? No, oh, my dear. Is our, our little police person awake yet? She said she'd be down in a few minutes. Hmm. Well, in a few minutes, I'll be off to City Hall. Oh, I do wish you'd wait to see her. She looks positively radiant this morning. On oh, the glow of youth. Yeah, I remember it well. Oh, I think there's something more than youth that's making your daughter glow. Well, that sounds very cryptic. I think you could guess if you really tried. Are you trying to tell me that Deborah is in love again? Why do you say again? So far as I know, she's had only two men in her life. Yes, well, not counting at least uh, one dozen suitors at college. Good heavens, Geraldine. 
Surely you're not talking about the policeman. But of course. Certainly you can't be blind to the way Deborah feels about Steve Guthrie. And now that they're working so closely together. Yes, that's what I was afraid of. That's exactly what I feared from the first time that she declared her intention to carry that damn badge. How could they avoid being thrown together? And, of course, there is no greater stimulus to love than proximity. But surely there's no cause to fret about it. Or would you prefer that she was interested in the other one? You mean Rainey? Oh, no, 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 that wouldn't do at all. I've already told her that. In fact, I've done something more effective than that. I've already told Rainey that. Then why do you look so unhappy? Why not just accept the fact that it's going to happen sooner or later? Geraldine. Are you trying to say that that policeman has proposed? Well, nobody said anything about that. But I did get the impression that she does care for him very much. Well, yes, but the idea of having two policemen in the family... I'll get them. Hello. Morning, Mr. Saxon. This is Bill Marceau. Why, Chief Marceau, how are you? Geraldine, uh, has your husband left for the day yet? No, no, no. He's here. Just a moment, please. Thank you, my dear. Yes, Chief Marceau, what can I do for you? Mr. Saxon, I wonder if you could manage to drop by my office sometime within the next day or two. I know you have a heavy schedule these days, but uh, there's some questions that we need to ask you. Questions in connection with what? Oh, just some general connections uh, with a police matter. I didn't see the need to uh, issue a formal type of summons, you understand? No. No, I'm afraid I do not. And I haven't got the time to make any social calls. Apparently you don't understand. Mr. Saxon, this is an official interrogation. Now, if you'd rather that I had a paper issued by the court, uh, of course I'll do that. Well, just what police matters does this involve? Surely I'm entitled to know that. Yes. It has to do with the affairs and the death of a man named Morris P. Jackson. Tina. Denise, what are you doing out of bed? You should let that medication work. It is working. I feel much better. I just wanted to have a word with my father. Do you want me to leave? I think so. Oh, uh, Tina, one other thing. Would you please prepare a syringe for me just in case I should need something while you're gone? But you said that I didn't have to leave until your husband was on his way. Oh, well, uh, he'll be coming soon. Just, just get the syringe ready, all right? Daddy, looks like this is the day. I think it really has to be. See, this, this painkiller I've been taking um, leaves me kind of helpless, and I, I find I'm taking more and more of it. I really can't resist it, and I'm afraid that if I wait much longer, I really won't have the strength to... to uh, finish what I started. So uh, if I can get Miles here today, I'm, I'm going to have to go through with it. But the thing is, I don't know whether I'll be, I don't know whether I'll see you again, because I, if he comes, I'll have to give myself a shot as soon as he leaves. And I don't know whether I'll be able to Get out of bed then. So maybe this will be goodbye. Now don't look sad because it, don't be sad for me. I mean, I'm going to be free. Don't be sad for Miles either. He doesn't deserve it after what he's done to me. Dr. Kavanaugh's office. Who is this? Uh, this is Dr. Kavanaugh's nurse. May I ask who's calling? I didn't know he'd hired a nurse. What is your name? 
this is Miss Barclay. Are you a patient? Carol? Carol Barclay? My God, oh, Denise. God, what on earth are you doing there? Has Miles gone insane? Has he really hired you? Yes, he well, has. That's completely incredible. Oh, well, of course. He doesn't know about your little scandal at the Claremont. My father was good enough to keep that secret. Denise, what do you want? Well, I will just have to tell him that little story. We'll see how long you keep your job. Now put me through to him. He isn't here. He's at the hospital. Well, give me the number. I have to speak to him urgently. It's a matter of life and death. <laughs> The regularly scheduled 3.30 adventure, Giant, will be seen Tuesday at 3.30. This change is due to tonight's live coverage of Giants Baseball at 5. Tune in tomorrow for part one of the epic Giant. Check your listing and watch the game in your area. Tomorrow on 2020 with host Hugh Downs, a report on Russian dissidents Solzhenitsyn, Sharensky, and Ginsburg. Watch tomorrow at 10, 9 central and mountain, on ABC.